Okay. Um, I know when you talk about educational research, you have a specific understanding of the term educational. Yeah. 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 Would you like to outline that first? Please? Yeah, it's just that um, I studied um, with the group of philosophers and psychologists, sociologists at London University between 1968 and 72 for part time study, first for the academic diploma, then for the masters, whilst I was teaching full time science uh, in the East End of London. And what these philosophers, psychologists, sociologists believed and explicated was that educational theory was constituted by the disciplines of philosophy, psychology, sociology, and history of education. And that is what they claimed constituted educational theory. In other words, it was called the disciplines approach to educational theory constituted by those disciplines of education. Now, I was keen with my uh, pupils to explain the educational influence that I was having in their learning. I could not use any individual discipline or in any combination to produce a valid explanation of my educational influence. What I found myself doing, because my master's was in the psychology of education, was testing the validity of the psychological theories. So I, that is why I left, my vocation changed with that recognition. And I moved from being very pleased with being a science teacher, I decided to go into the university and I was lucky to get the post straight away at the University of Bath, where I was determined to see if I could contribute to a valid form of educational theory, which could explain the educational influences of teacher researchers in the learning, their own learning, but also with the learning of their students. Am I making sense here that that is why I actually coined the phrase a living educational theory approach to distinguish it from the disciplines approach to educational theory? Yeah, there's a huge distinction, really, isn't there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 